Beloved, I come to you again. I can't even get any sleep because the Lord has blessed me with a revelation of what I've asked to understand, which is his mysteries. God is not a God who keeps secrets, except that which is, which what he'll say, keep a secret, which like the return of our Savior, Jesus, when we'll see him in the sky. But there's other mysteries that the Lord will give us, because he's not a secret of God. But I wanted to ask the Lord about this revolving number five that I keep seeing over and over and over again that I didn't once understand until now and the Holy Spirit speaking to me expressed to me through the Word of God why five is important. I'm going to express it to you that you may have an understanding as you receive this wisdom as the Lord God has given it to me. That I shouldn't be selfish with it, boasting about it myself, saying that I'm special because I'm not. I know nothing other than Jesus Christ, our Lord, was crucified for our sins, that we can be reconciled with our Father in heaven and have a personal relationship with Him until His Son returns to gather us up again in the sky. So, the number five, as I was mentioning before about the seal of perfection, here again is a picture of uh, what IBM scientists took in a laboratory uh, the, of a molecule. And with the molecule, you can see all the series of atoms and electrons um, surrounding it. But the thing about it to really understand is that on a, on a molecular structure, uh, the seal of perfection is displayed as I once already uh, talked about with the tri tetrahedron being seen over and over and over again and the hexagon coming out of a tetrahedron um, reflects uh, the hexagon reflects the seal of perfection because it comes out of the comes out of the seal of perfection as you can see with this diagram here but to the one on the right I wanted to express these electrons that you see orbiting the seal of perfection because the picture on the right is uh, a photo of a molecule on the looking at it on its side and as you can see the molecule has a barrier uh, around it a hedge if you will around it with five electrons and what I can understand with how Lucifer got the pentagon or the pentagram was the number five because it's a five shaped star a five pointed star and I see now that he got the five pointed star because taking the seal of perfection which included this hedge or this barrier around a molecule or the hedge or, or barrier around the seal of perfection had five lights inside or five electrons surrounding it so Lucifer wanted to take as I mentioned before the seal of perfection's barrier with these five electrons to make the star but what he didn't want to do was have anything to do with the seal of perfection but why five so the spirit spoke to me and told me to go to Genesis and I went into Genesis and this is what it reads so in the evening and the morning were the fifth day then God said let the earth bring forth the living creatures according to its kind cattle and creeping things and the beast of the earth each according to its kind and so it was and so and it was so and God made the beast on the earth according to its kind cattle according to its kind and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind and God saw that it was good then God said let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea the birds of the air and the cattle and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so God created man in his own image and in the image of God he created him male and female he created them then God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds in the air and over every creeping every living thing that moves on the earth on the fifth day mankind was created created to have dominion over animals now if you notice how many types of animals one cattle two beasts of the earth three creeping things four fish of the sea and five birds of the air so it seems again that five has to do with creation because on the fifth day God created 
mankind, along with the finishing of his creation on earth, in which, the, in which he gave dominion of the animals to us, to subdue it. We had dominion over the animals. So we have to see that there's, there's with five, it's synonymous with creation and dominion, or control, or order. These animals of the world aren't just one rapid and wild and chaos. We are to have dominion over them. It's been ordained by us to have control over them. Now, here's the thing. How do we get dominion over animals? Well, with our hands and feet, which, <laughs> which has five fingers on each hand and five toes on each foot. So, again, God gives us dominion. And then just notice, just notice this for a second. On the fifth day, God creates mankind in which he finishes the creation of his animals. Five types of animals. And of the five types of animals, God gives us dominion over them to, in which we, get, we have dominion over them by the use of our hands and feet. That has five fingers on each hand and five toes on each foot. So can you imagine, though, for whatever it might be like if we never had five fingers or five toes? It's really hard to walk and it's really hard to do anything without just one of these things. It makes it more difficult because God gave us originally the mechanism to control, organize, and do things, move, stand with the five fingers and five toes that he gave us. That was ordained by him for us to have because with it comes control, organization, order, and everything like that that we see when it comes to us controlling animals on this planet. But here's something else. So it seems that five reflects God's ordained creation and order. His consent to control, in this case, the mission to make mankind to have dominion over animals through the use of our hands and feet. But has God used five elsewhere regarding dominion and control? Here we see five again reflecting God's ordained dominion, control, and order. The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments have the Ten Commandments were a bunch of commandments, Ten Commandments that God gave Moses on Mount Sinai after the, uh, Israel was delivered from Egypt. But notice the Fifth Commandment. It states, Honor thy mother and thy father. Thy mother and thy father are our earthly creators ordained by God for us to be born. Remember, God is the one who chooses who to be born. Satan is not a creator of life. The Lord is. So God ordains two human beings to create another human being in which the fifth commandment of the ten commandments God makes God commissions and orders us to have to honor our mother and father now just think for a second just like how I mentioned before if we didn't have hands and feet our life become quite difficult without it now just think how hard it is for a child who does not respect their parents for a child who doesn't respect their parents, that child is probably reckless and out of order all the time because he doesn't have a mother and father to respect. So you can see that God ordains order under a child who honors their mother and father because first the child has to first love God to be able to believe that God's rule is righteous enough to follow. But has God used five anywhere else? To display his commissioned dominion and control? Yes. And the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. His crucifixion was so specific and tailor made to a T that he had to be crucified with that nail going through his hands, with those nails going through his feet. It reflected a message that God ordained for Jesus to obtain by himself alone, which was he would own, bear the sins of all of mankind in his hands, in his feet. All of it would be his if he can get it done. Satan could not deter him from what God ordained him to do on planet Earth. God took control by owning all the sins. Or Jesus, rather, took control by owning all the sins of mankind in his hands and feet. And this is validating the scripture. Notice, 
Matthew twenty-eight eighteen, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And in Colossians, it says, And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirement that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he hath taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing them over them in it. So as you can see, without Christ, we are slaves to Satan, in bondage. And who should we trust to order our life? Satan? What good comes out of that? How hard is it to do anything when your hands are bound and in bondage? How hard is it to organize? How hard is it, is it to work? How hard is it to function when you're a bondage, in bondage into your sin? When there is no reluctance that what a person may be doing is right or wrong, it just, seems, it just leads them to death, leads them to unhappiness, leads them to sadness, leads them to sorrow because they're slaves in a market that they have been delivered out of. But it's all free will. And we have the will to either subject ourselves to Satan. And you can see that he, he took the very symbol that he wants to control us. He wants to control us. He wants to be like God. So he took the very symbol that reflected the Lord's order and took it for himself. So he can control in order us and we get no happiness out of it though it may make us feel good though it may make us feel a certain way if it's contrary to the Word of God it leads to nothing it's temporary it does not create anything good but these are our own hands what you're seeing this picture I can this picture with these chains shackled to us this is the life of a sinner without the freedom of Christ because with the freedom of Christ comes life, in which the Bible says in Jeremiah, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. In John it says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So again, it's free will. Everyone has their own decision to make. Satan will never ever let a person go from this to this without a struggle. And the struggle comes through things that make us feel good. That's how he that's how he works. He works very deceptively by keeping us bound to things that we think we can't let go of because we don't have the strength to do it. But all we have to do is confess with our mouth, believe in our heart, that God has raised Jesus from the dead, and we will be saved. Through that, Jesus resides within us. And as we abide in Him, He abides in us as He abides in the Father. And through that mechanism, the Holy Spirit, the Helper, enables us to be able to become new creatures. Where old things are gone and everything's new. And we don't have to be subject to sin anymore. We are bought with a price outside of the market of sin. We are bought with a price to become slaves to Christ. And later on to be called sons and daughters of God. Adopted into his family. So we can leave this, this market of sin into a family of life. A family of joy, peace, long-suffering, faithfulness, gentleness, kindness. If we open our hearts. Don't be stubborn and don't be proud. Don't think that you need to get your life together first before you open your heart to the Lord because it'll never happen. It'll never Satan will never let you do it willingly on your own, which is what he wants you to do. Do it on your own. You cannot do it on your own. Because God did not allow salvation to come through your hands or my hands, but through the hands of his son. If you have any questions and you want to pray, send me an email and I'll pray for you. Answer any questions you may have. And I hope to, that you come to salvation through Christ.
mysteries that the Lord will give us because it's not a secret of God. But I wanted to ask the Lord about this revolving number five that I keep seeing over and over and over again that I didn't once understand until now and the Holy Spirit speaking to me expressed to me through the Word of God why five is important. I'm going to express it to you that you made out of a tetrahedron um, reflects the hexagon reflects the seal of perfection because it comes out of the comes out of the seal of perfection as you can see with this diagram here but to the one on the right I wanted to express these electrons that you see orbiting the seal of perfection because the picture on the right is uh, a photo of a molecule on the looking at it on its side and as you can see the molecule has a barrier uh, around it a perfection. Here again is a picture of uh, what IBM scientists took in a laboratory uh, the, of a molecule and with the molecule you can see all the series of atoms uh, and electrons um, surrounding it but the thing about it to really understand is that on a, on a molecular structure uh, the seal of perfection is displayed as I once already uh, talked about with the tri tetrahedron being seen over and over and over again in the hexagon coming have an understanding as you receive this wisdom as the Lord God has given it to me that I shouldn't be selfish with it boasting about it myself saying that I'm special because I'm not I know nothing other than Jesus Christ our Lord was crucified for our sins that we can be reconciled with our Father in heaven and have a personal relationship with him until his son returns to gather us up again in the sky. So, the number five, as I was mentioning before about the seal of beloved, I come to you again. I can't even get any sleep because the Lord has blessed me with a revelation of what I've asked to understand, which is his mysteries. God is not a God who keeps secrets, except that which is, which what he'll say, keep a secret, which like the return of our Savior, Jesus, when we'll see him in the sky. But there's other 